we are excited to announce that our app is now available. Download it today and enjoy the daily story and more. 365 Christian Men April 3rd, John Jasper Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real-life stories about men. John was baptized one morning and preached a funeral service that same afternoon. Being a man of reason and courage, he defied the laws of Virginia that forbade slaves to learn to read and write. More than a century later, that same state recognized John's achievements and honored him as a strong man in Virginia history. On this date, in 1865, John secured his freedom from slavery. John started a church in 1867 with just nine members, and within 34 years, its membership had increased to more than 2,000. John never let slavery define him or limit him, either before the Civil War or after. Where others saw obstacles, John saw opportunities. Can't hold services unless white men attend? Fine, preach to those white men. Maybe God will convert them. No formal training in hermeneutics? Fine, preach from the heart, with conviction and faith. God's word is what's important here. Just before he died, John told those gathered around him that he was looking for further orders. He understood better than most what it meant to be a slave of Jesus Christ. If you overfocus on the problem, you might miss the opportunity. In the tobacco factory of Richmond, Virginia, John Jasper worked 16-hour days. He often said he was the best man at his job. But on July 4th, he struggled to focus on his work. Suddenly, conviction of his sins gripped his heart. In desperation, he cried out for mercy from God. Immediately, the struggle vanished. Jasper told his boss, Samuel Hargrove, what had happened, and the boss scandalized the whole room. He came over and shook Jasper's hand, said he was happy he had found the Savior, and Jasper's Savior was Hargrove's Savior, and he understood. Then Hargrove told him to take the day off, go home and tell his family about Jesus. Then go through the factory and tell all of them, too. Later, Jasper liked to say Jesus called him to preach, but Hardgrove had commissioned him, too. But being a slave limited what Jasper would be allowed to do. He knew that, and he made up his mind that he wouldn't focus on what he wasn't allowed to do. Instead, he would make the most of the opportunities all his limits created. Slaves were not allowed to be educated. So, of course, Jasper could not read but he knew God had called him to tell the truth about Jesus. One of Jasper's friends was not optimistic and challenged Jasper. How would he preach when he couldn't read or write? Jasper said he intended to brag on Jesus. And Jasper did. His sermons consisted of what he had previously heard, until a pastor took Jasper aside and told him he must learn to read the Bible for himself. With the help of that pastor, Within seven months, Jasper taught himself to read the Bible. Jasper spoke at a funeral at the old African Baptist Church of Richmond. With his arms pointed toward the sky, Jasper pictured the deceased with a smile on his face as he entered heaven. The men of the church were mesmerized. They wanted him to be a regular speaker at their church in Petersburg. But Jasper could only preach when his master allowed after the 16-hour-long workdays. So, Jasper bargained. If Hargrove would allow Jasper to preach on the fourth Sunday of every month, the church would pay Jasper a dollar, and he would give it to Hargrove. Deal. The next obstacle was that Virginia law forbade slaves to organize, so Jasper could only preach when a white minister or a committee of white men were present. But Jasper considered this an opportunity to preach to white men, who would otherwise not attend. As an added benefit, the presence of the white men discouraged trouble from any prejudiced people who wanted to disrupt the services. One Sunday, after the choir finished singing, Jasper stood rigid, gazing toward heaven with his eyes wide open, and he prayed. 
Then he opened his Bible and read from Revelation 6-2. The congregation listened intently as Jasper described the Lord Jesus standing with his bow and arrow outstretched, preparing to conquer his enemies. Then Jasper asked the congregation if they wanted to be one of the multitude crowning Christ king. It's said he didn't preach long before the critical white people were stirred to the depths of their souls and their emotions showed in their weeping. Even Jasper's most skeptical critics described him as being like John the Baptist, a man sent from God. Jasper could say, as the Apostle Paul did in Philippians 1, 12 through 13, Now I want you to know, brethren, that my circumstances have turned out for the greater progress of the gospel, so that my imprisonment in the cause of Christ has become well known. What are some of the obstacles that seem to be stifling your progress? If you overfocus on the problem, you might miss the opportunity. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. For today's story, we have a free one-page group discussion sheet available on our website. Please join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.